equations and what they are. So a parallel equation, uh, they're just two equations that happen to have the same slope. When they give you a graph, um, it, it, the visual way of just looking at it is look for the two lines that are never going to touch. In this case, L's, right? If you had uh, uh, something like that, look like two L's, you know, L's happen to be like little vertical lines. Um, and so if you were to extend them forever, they would never touch, okay? If you had something that was like that, I mean, that's no longer a double L. At some point, they will touch. Um, so again, a quick visual on that end. Uh, so again, parallel equations, they are on the same plane. And they never intersect. Right, aka they never touch. And we have lines that look like whoops, we have lines that look like that. We could have lines that look like that. And so forth. Okay. Uh, now on to the equations themselves. The actual equations, we will find out that if two lines are parallel, then they will have the same slope. Okay, and I want to remind you guys that slope is what comes before the variable x, okay? And this is important right here, they're going to have the same slope. And usually when we're looking at the equation, we always look at it, we always compare it when it looks like y is equal to mx plus b, where m is your slope. So if two equations are parallel and one of the equations was y is equal to 3x plus 7 and you wanted to know which of the following equations was parallel to it and your options were y is equal to 2x plus 7 y is equal to negative 1 over 3x and y is equal to 3x. Well, the very first thing we do is we look at our equation and our slope happens to be 3. So when you're comparing it to your other equations, that's all you have to look for. Which of these has an x right before, I mean, has a 3 right before the x? No. It has a 3, but it's in the, in the fraction. When I get a 1 over 3, so no. And yes. Even though it doesn't have a plus something, it's still an equation. Okay. Again, if you had calculators, you could always graph your options and see what's up. For instance, again, this is 3x plus 7. So let's say that's the equation I had here. So there's the equation of such line. And let's say I wanted to, you know, prove that it worked out. So again, I was checking out the 3x one. And right there, again, parallel. Two slanted L's right there. So again, guys, uh, that's pretty much it when it comes to knowing whether something is parallel or not. All you have to do is just look at the equations. Now, there will be times when they give you the equations in standard form or in point-slope form. You know, the equations won't be in slope-intercept. 
it's really nice it when, it's really nice when you have it like this y is equal to mx plus b because you could automatically look at slope but if it's not and if the y is not by itself you just got to make it look like that i'm going to go ahead and give you an example let's say you had the equation in standard form remember that when something's in standard form it's ax plus by is equal to c it's usually what it looks like um, so let's say we had the equation of 3x plus 4y is equal to 12 that's what it was and you were looking for uh, which what was what was the slope right you were looking for what is the equation what is the slope of a line parallel to this? Let's say that's what we're looking for. What is the slope of a line parallel to the equation above? A parallel to equation above. And anytime they give you some type of word problem, look for keywords. They want parallel, so they want to know what the slope is. Now, a lot of students would see, oh, sir, I remember that you said that our slope M is always before the letter X. That's three. And they are going to try to trick you. And a lot of times they do. And so you need to remember that, yeah, uh, Y is equal to MX plus B. The number before the x is your slope, but when it looks like this. And currently, our equation that was provided does not look in slope intercept form. So all you have to do is a little bit of work in which you're going to isolate the variable y. Anything that is not a y is going to get moved to the other side. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we have right now 3x plus 4y is equal to 12. We're solving for y, so we're going to move the 3x to the other side by doing the opposite, right? So minus 3x doing the inverse, minus 3x. So this goes away. We bring down the 4y. Remember, we cannot combine them because the 12 has no x. So you could either say it's 12 minus 3x, but normally we like to put the x in front. So negative 3x, the 12 was positive, so plus 12. And now it's even negative, right? But here's the thing again. It doesn't look like y is equal to there, so 4. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 1y one is just y. Negative 3 over 4. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3. And so my slope, now that this looks like y is equal to mx plus b, my slope is what is right before the x. That's my slope. And so if I wanted to know the slope of a line parallel to this, it would be that. Because when they're parallel, it's exactly the same. And notice how that's pretty much unimportant. Uh, but again, guys, if they give you an equation that does not look like y is equal to mx plus b, and you're trying to find the equation of a new line of some kind and you need the slope, just do this work. Very uh, simple, a simple manipulation, and that's all it is.